It's easy for you to look at a man and say this man is a wicked man, harsh to all his children until you find out the story of that man's anger. You will find out that at 18, that man was one of the most gentle person you will ever find. But all the siblings and everybody died and they left him with 30 children to raise all of them. That was the origin of that anger. The anger was in him, but there was nothing to activate it. And because it was not dealt with by the strength of the spirit, the presence of 30 children versus their school fees and a job that is the, the salary keeps declining is what activated that. No wonder a couple will get married and a woman will turn and say, this is not the man I married. Let me tell you, that's the man you married. It's just that what the, the activation system when you see a man nice to his wife and say, I will never touch you, he's talking nonsense. If you are speaking by the agency of the spirit, you are right. But if you mean just because I love you, keep watching, your heart is listening to you. The day that something will happen, a man called me one time, I think there was a year that the man reached me, true story. A small boy went to kick a car kicked the man's car, you know children and all these their things and he just crashed the car through a fence. The man was thinking of how to beat and kill this child. How do I start? It's not whether I would do it. I'm thinking of how I'm going to start killing this child. So when you are an onlooker, you will say what kind of an angry man is this? Whereas the same thing in him is in you, waiting for an opportunity to come out. Why is this person jealous? Why is there jealousy among men of God? Why can't they just walk as one? Don't worry, Shay, you're about to start ministry. By the time you start ministry and after 10 years, you have only three members. You will know why people get angry. This is not an issue of good or bad. It's an issue of the human nature that has not been examined to be understood. ta -da -da. ta -da -da. Da, da, da. when you go to pastors conferences and you see men of God crying the man of God just raises a song of worship and you see a pastor rolling let me tell you why he's rolling he's rolling because after 20 years of ministry he does not even understand himself again he's sitting before the presence of God and saying, Lord who am I you have to answer me now I thought I knew myself 20 years ago but right now I don't even know who I am again Let me tell you sincerely, everything you ever see that manifests did not come in. It was always there. But there is a system God has provided to be able to tame the flesh with understanding. Not in the strength of the flesh. Taming the flesh the, in the strength of the flesh is a total waste of time. It's like trying to push a wall. You are the one who will be tired. Is someone learning now? Apostle, me, I'm a man of integrity. What has tested you? Apostle, I don't, I don't like with me the kind of grace God gave me. If I see women, they are like trees. <laughs> and men too, vice versa. Even if one billion naira is given to me, I won't collect it. And your heart is saying is because we have not gone together it's only your mind that has gone that's why your mind refused to collect it let your heart follow your body when you see that money especially when your loved one is in the hospital say my son is this how you will leave me to die then you will now know why the young lady started following one man for money and mercy will be in your heart you will no longer say all these ladies moving around because you had the privilege of a family that could support you I'm not excusing licentiousness, you get my point. I'm revealing to you something about the state of man. So many people say this guy just became bad or this pastor changed or this businessman changed. No, you got it wrong. In iniquity did my mother conceive me. By the time you start a revival, you know, most people who start ministries, maybe fellowships and the rest, provided it's a small fellowship where people meet under a tree. There's no reason for jealousy and pain and what everybody's just praying. So you pray, there's no basket to drop offerings, so there is no thief to pick anything. 
But that does not mean among the prayer warriors there is no thief. Generational causes, demons and wicked spirits hiding while you are praying. And the day somebody comes and says, I want to donate 500,000 to this small fellowship. Someone will say, what? was Judas always bad? You are wrong. Yes. The problem is that what was in him? Do you know the kind of screening he must have gone through to be Jesus' treasurer? Remember, Jesus prayed all night before he got the disciples. And not even Peter was given the basket. You don't know the kind of offering people gave Jesus. That's why you are talking. A woman who comes to break one year's salary at his feet. Look at Gehazi. When Gehazi saw what they gave um, Elisha, Gehazi went back and said, hold on, please. My master is a stupid man. He doesn't know that I work with him. Even if you don't want, must you, a king gives you this gift. And Elisha said, was my spirit not with you? So Jesus looks at Nathaniel, who just finished criticizing him. And here Jesus' verdict, he's an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. How could you say that about that man? There are many people today who look like drunkards. But let me tell you, they are more of stature in terms of the purity of their heart than several people. Because by their strength, they have tried to patch away a lot of evil. This is the one that trapped them. But there are many people who were born again. It was with scripture they came out. They came out with their father prophesying on their mother. You shall not die. That's how they came out. And from that day, and still in the atmosphere of the anointing, only God knows the possibilities that is within their hearts. In iniquity did my mother conceive me. Listen, this, this revelation bar puts you in a position immediately where the presence of God does not become a church thing again. In other words, you are saying, Lord, I don't even know the variety of tendencies that are hiding within me. Apostle, I don't drink. I will never drink. It depends on what was given you before that time. It's all this, this thing that cause ill health and death will you drink it your fear alone will make you look like you are disciplined <laughs> there are many people who are not disciplined they are just afraid and that fear is because of ignorance and low level orientation by the time you enter a king's palace and see the delicacy that is in a king's palace you will respect daniel for saying he will not he purposed in his heart that he will not corrupt himself with the king's meat before you say amen find out what is the king's meat have you seen a king's table before hallelujah praise the name of the lord The heart of man, the nature of man's heart, please listen, is the biggest limitation to that man's rising and also to the program of God. And if you do not understand how to administer this prayer, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. I give you an assurance, I hate to be the bearer of bad, a bad news, but you'll be surprised. A man of God who goes to get charms to do ministry. It's easy for you to stand and say, all these people serve, they get charms. Until you find out the pressure that is upon him. That man will tell you at age 15, people vowed that I will never make it. And out of that, they delved into all kinds of things. And now they messed up their lives with all kinds of superstition and demonic activities. Nevertheless, God's standard will never change. Are we together? To be a friend of God and to access the heal of the Lord, the Bible gives very clear conditions. And let me tell you, it is not within the power of any man unassisted by the Spirit to be able to attain that realm. This is the reason why Jesus looked at the zealous disciples. They went to preach for a few days and they returned back rejoicing. Remember the story? Even the devils were subject to us in your name. And Jesus said, what are you going through? You've not gone through anything. In the course of time, trouble started brewing. 
the trouble that started brewing was number one who was the greatest remember the story and then somebody the mother of james and john came to now start negotiating a position and the other disciples had it and they were angry you now see all the elements of flesh one day they summoned courage and said jesus listen we have left all to follow you we have respected you enough what is in this for us jesus didn't turn and tell them you are stupid and wicked people mm -mm. He said i know peter who said i love you one moment and Jesus is telling him, get thee behind me, Peter. And then he said, Peter, Satan has desired. You didn't even know when he got into your heart to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. When Peter denied Jesus Christ three times and ran away, he went back to fish. Do you know when Jesus resurrected, immediately, Jesus went to the seashore. If I'm Jesus, I'm sure I'll say, Peter, come. <laughs> and if you don't come and allow me walk on that water, you will know I'm the creator. But watch Jesus. Are we together? Peter came and saw him. Do you know Peter's verdict? Depart from me. I am a sinner, an unclean person. And Jesus said, no, sit down. Then he asked a question when they ate fish. He said, lovest thou me? He said, Peter, Simon, but Jonah, lovest thou me more than this? Peter said, I love you. Jesus never said it's a lie. He said, feed my lamb. After he spoke, the disciples, their blood was hot. They were boiling to start evangelism. He said, tarry. Don't you leave that upper room. If not in two days, you will go back. Remember what happened within three days. Help them, please. Do not, please, let me have your attention. Are we together now? Tarry. There are many people, listen, believers, let me teach you something. There are many promotions and open doors that are closed to, doors that should be open, that are closed today, not by the devil. I have told you this thing. Not every manifestation that carries a semblance of evil is evil. There are many of them that is an expression of God's mercy to preserve you because you have been weighed in the spirit and you lack the stamina to survive that kind of thing if it comes. There are many of you today who do not have jobs or do not have an opportunity to go abroad. I'm telling you it's not because the prayer of the man of God is not working. It is a sign of God's mercy to keep you quietly. That's why the Bible says in all things to give thanks because you don't even know what God is doing. Imagine if I came to Abuja in 2013. Only God knows what would have happened now. Maybe I would have died by now and a story would have been written. One man of God who left Zaria and came and within one year, when they gave him one billion, something happened to his head and that's the end of it. Young ministers, let this be a lesson. Wait for God's timing. At the end of your life, your life will be an inspiration to the next generation or a warning that when people want to say, hear God, they will say, make sure you don't hear like this person. Is God teaching someone now? There are many things you are complaining about. At the end of this service, you will need to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I did not get that job. Thank you that that person who was asking me to come to Europe, I didn't get my visa because that person was training prostitutes in Europe, not a job. I was desperate to get out of Nigeria, yet I cannot pray for two hours. And then you want to go to a land where people can walk naked and not matter. Whereas you are in a place where people are covered from head to toe, you are still not all right. Listen, look at me. Ladies and gentlemen, please look at me. Let me tell you sincerely, let me tell you sincerely, until and unless our generation understands the construct, the intrinsic weakness that is in man. That's why when God look at man who ignores him, he calls it pride. You know why it is pride? Because the Bible says he knows that we are dust. Do you know how dust is? Does it have the power to keep itself against the wind? Go to the desert and see how wind plays with dust. That's how man is. So it is pride for dust to just sit down and say, God, I don't need you. I went to school. I have the power to keep myself. 
MOG, hear the word of the Lord now, early enough, before you begin to establish branches. There are certain levels of honor and increase and grace. When it comes to your life, you will be surprised you will not pray for one month and you will not think it's wrong. Because what is wrong? Whether you pray for one month or not, there's an alert coming every day. The Lord led me to give you 100 million. Another person will say, the Lord led me to give you 500 million. And you say, so this is my life. I'm now a rich man. God, that suffering that led me to pray and fast is over. You sing that my Yakare song for him. He say, it's over, over with you. I'm tired. I see you as a luggage. It's over. And then God says, let me respect you. And the first time you step out, that's when you will learn that armed robbers look for rich men. And that's when you will learn that ritualists are looking for exactly those kind of people. Are we together? Yes, sir. There are many people who rise to certain levels in their families. Then they start having certain dreams. And someone just appears to you and says, listen, just to inform you that you are welcome. We have been watching you. The same way we followed your father, we are coming after you. And you say, what happened to me? They were always there. They were only waiting for who rises to that spiritual level. There are some prayers and spiritual activities that don't just send Satan away. It brings him. Look at the prayer and fasting of Jesus. When Jesus was done praying and fasting, it was Satan who came. Please listen to what I'm telling you. This is the voice of the Spirit. Man, unassisted by God, does not have the power to host and sustain the revival coming. I'm saying this to you. I learned this in my own life and even in this ministry. I handed this ministry long ago to God. And even though administration demands that we do the work of oversight and blessing God's people, believe me when I tell you that this ministry belongs to the Lord. It's not a false humility from a man of God. If this ministry belongs to me, I will not survive one week. Are we together? You think it's everybody who sends me a text message who is saying, Apostle, God bless you, you will be surprised. Sometimes I will wake up tired from a conference, just open my text and you will see a long message, warning to you from the Lord. People are calling you now and you cannot pick. You think you are a proud person. I just say, oh God, look at this now. How can somebody call you 10 or 20 times and you don't pick? Who do you think you are? Or the apostle they told me about is not the one I'm seeing. <laughs> now imagine that I call the person twice. Okay, let's talk. You don't know me. A revival is coming. Many people are jumping and shouting a revival is coming. But they are not paying attention to the kind of stature it takes. Do you know how heavy a revival is? A revival comes with criticisms. A revival comes with you being misunderstood. Are you ready to survive that for his name? Find out people who were matired. I've told you, you know how many people were matired as, as at the end of this year? When they were praying during the crossover, they said in the name of Jesus, by 2022 December, I will still be there. And yet for the sake of the gospel today, they have gone. Not for the sake of carelessness. Some of them stood face to face with enemies and they said, denounce your faith. It's not like a newspaper, you are going to build an institution and name it after them. And they said, no, I will stand for Jesus. We are giving you two more minutes to think about it. And they made up their mind. They said, no. My apologies, you hear me sing a lot of songs in house art these days. It's just a song that comes to my spirit relating to what I'm saying. That's the price. I belong to Jesus. Never going back, never going back. 
I belong to Jesus. I read how the disciples died. And all these people who are shouting, I'm an apostle. <laughs> read your Bible and see how apostles died. It's not, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm saying you need to sit down and think about the meaning of what you are receiving. Military people, when you are going to NDA, there's a form you sign. That sign is, I've donated myself to the nation. If I reach a general and I retire, fine and good. But if I die in the, in the course of my work, then let it be. That is what it means, oh. When you donate yourself to Jesus Christ, you are not, it's not a conditional donation. Most of us see all of these things, maybe a protocol, follow a man of God when you are coming, all of these privileges, maybe photos online and the rest, and we get carried away by these things. We just feel that all there is is fame and glitz and glamour. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but let me tell you sincerely, signing to stand by the cross is that you have sacrificed your life. Paul says, for me to live is Christ, and if I die, it is gain. Are you willing to? That's what it means to pray for a revival to come. A revival will bring a fierce attack from the great of hell. Lord, send more members to me. You are saying, Lord, send more courses towards my direction to take care of. Send more altars that are fighting people. You think those altars will fold their arms and watch you set people free every week? And then the, if you are the devil, will you be silent over such a person? I belong to Jesus. Never going back, never going back, sons. Now you will know why we honor fathers. You know why we honor, when we see a man who is 50 years in ministry, we kneel down and say, Daddy, God bless you. And ignorant people keep talking nonsense. We are not just celebrating bodies. We are celebrating the testament of mastering the act of taming the flesh and standing for this long with the light of the gospel. Hallelujah. Pray one minute while you are seated. Please pray. I came to charge your heart tonight. Hallelujah. So, we have identified that the real issue, please look up. The real issue is not the situations and circumstances that weaken believers. The real issue is that intrinsically, the heart condition of everyone, except purged by the Spirit of God, already has within itself the tendencies for destruction. Can I tell you, prayerlessness is already in that heart. Lust is already in that heart. Pride is already in that heart. It's not coming. It is there in iniquity. Did my mother conceive me? What it waits for is the situation and the scenario that now activates what is inside. Are we together? Yes. By the time you become a CEO of a company, having a turnover of one billion per month, then the spirit of theft that is in every man that is hiding there suddenly comes out through a fierce temptation. Remember, you need 50 million by next week. You can help yourself quietly and nobody will know. So many, many people, they don't know that I've made my choice to follow Jesus. I follow the Lamb. Wherever you lead So many, many people They don't know That I've made my choice To follow Jesus I'll follow the Lamb Wherever He leads Nina Yesune Bazankoma Please hear me. 
the day your biological father looks at you and says all you know is church you are a useless young man I had confidence in you thinking you are the one who will lift this family I hear there was an opportunity to pay five million for something there was an opportunity to reduce your age by 10 years and you would have gotten a job and you brought this your church stupidity that is the day you can see the semblance of profit in evil and you will be angry the day somebody looks at you and says you would have married by now young lady sit down there and keep saying i'm a child of god i am a deborah i am an esther you and and and, and you will sit down there and be angry there are times when godliness looks like a burden let me tell you sincerely I've had the honor to pray over men of God and they just come and say apostle you are lucky ministry is working I've been in this city for a long time to an extent that my wife asked me if you are really called wife not strangers strangers can talk nonsense but when your wife says sorry my husband don't be offended let's verify whether we are called so that we'll stop wasting our time let me tell you something about men he will not say anything he will just stand up in the night and be walking around his living room and say Lord so this is how you chose I was a sinner and I was doing well I gave my life to you this is what you are doing with my life now is this what you do with people who give their lives to you in Jeremiah 17 from verse 9 and 10 the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked that it is deceitful above all things who can know it this is God speaking about the state of man there is jealousy locked up in your heart there is anger locked up in your heart just because it has not manifested I tell you it does not mean it is not there you will now know the value of coming boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and help in time of need so that when you spend time worshiping the Lord and you spend time opening up yourself if God tells you young man you have the spirit of mammon you won't sit down and say God when I just do you know some of the calls that God makes to sacrifice maybe give money or sow your car and the rest it is not about the car or money it is these things he's trying to bring out there are times God will say, lock yourself for three days and fast. And it will not even, it, it won't be anything spectacular. And you'll be wondering, Lord, what are you working on? Just leave God with his training on you. He knows what he's pruning. There are times as a man of God, he will close doors of ministry by himself. Three months, nobody inviting you. And you'll be under pressure to show you are still relevant so that nobody will say his oil is going down and you will try to manipulate invitations whereas those three months were God's window of opportunity for you to find him genuinely because the next level you are stepping into the temptations and the trouble that will fight your anointing you do not yet have the grace for it you know many people just stand to say God told he raised me for a generation a generation ask the presidents of many nations have you seen how old the presidents of many nations become within four years it is said that the presidents and leaders of nations age almost twice their normal time within their tenure as presidents I've had the honor and the privilege of speaking with a few and I can tell you some of them are in a hurry to go away. When I go for meetings, most times when I'm coming in, maybe the cars, the convoy is bringing me or something. And usually protocol have a way of, you know, just flogging it to people's eyes. Everybody give way, apostle is coming. And most times I'm, I squeeze myself in the midst of all this and people are trying to touch and I'm wondering oh dear I wish these people know what is on this head that they are not seeing hallelujah and many people sit down and admire I'm going to be like this it's good to be inspired but let me tell you the truth 
until you build the stamina and the greatest stamina you need to build is not to get anointing the greatest stamina you need to build is not to cram scriptures so that when you stand on stage you can just speak it the greatest stamina you need is power through God to tame the flesh like a football and keep it there like this at that point God can give you the keys of Africa and say please for the next 10 years moving in Africa you are the one I'm trusting you and he can he knows that you will do that job I have seen the revivals coming I tell you in my visions many times and ladies and gentlemen I submit to you sincerely many people who are standing in expectation to be featured in this revival will be disappointed not because God does not want to use them but the standard of the Lord has a non-negotiable prerequisite and among it is not just prayer for anointing most of our prayer and fasting is centered around demons and anointing in the name of Jesus, this spirit has to give way. There is a place for that. In the name of Jesus, Lord, my head will not be dry of oil. And we can fast dry for one week. But let me tell you, the nobler cause for fasting is, Lord, search my heart. You are sending me to the nations. I do not even know what is within me. I do not know the tendencies within me in the presence of fame, in the presence of lifting, in the presence of infinite possibilities. I do not know what is enshrined within my heart. So before I become a casualty to myself, I pray that you come with that refiner's fire. Let me show you two scriptures before we wrap up. Bazan koma baya Nina Yesune Bazan koma James chapter 4 and verse 8 What is the call tonight and what is the solution? James chapter 4 Please give it to us media very quickly and verse 8 Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you he said, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. The first call is draw nigh to God. Not draw nigh to fame. Not draw nigh to a name. Not draw nigh to spiritual activities. In other words, listen, take serious your relationship with God. It does not just give you value to be relevant. It is your system of preservation. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 6 now beckons on us to come boldly. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. To come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. So when you see somebody like Baba Adeboe and many of our fathers, you want to talk with them and they will say, come back on Friday. I am alone with God. It does not make sense alone with God looking for what again? And they lock up themselves shut themselves away from any fame and any whatever oh we want to give you an award no I'm not interested I'm spending time with the God of heaven you now know why people seek God passionately they seek God passionately first because they love him but they seek him as life he is literally the basis of survival I belong to Jesus, never going back, never going back. I've heard of many, many pastors that were matired in the north since when I was in Zaria. I heard of a pastor who was, by the way, I saw the man of God from Adamawa State. May God bless you. They used to bring me many years from Mubi. They, they bring me to Mubi. When there was crisis in Mubi, and you know terrorists came and ravaged that place when the church was about to come back to, uh, together you know they invited me over for a program and such gracious and loving people I, I've, I've seen them kill people a man who told his wife I do not know whether I will survive next week and truly he died it's easy to say may they are so rest in peace but when you stand face to face with what can take your life that's when you will know whether you have stamina or not. It's not when somebody is on a wheelchair. If the person does not get up, they will not arrest you. You will just say, God bless you. Share up your faith. Let's see in another meeting. Save Johnny. 
but when you stand before somebody who says Jesus or the world not even just death house rent and you can compromise and get your rent in a moment or you can stand for Jesus genuinely but there are consequences including driving you from that place and you know most people look at the story of the Hebrew boys and just say that um, well Jesus came read your Bible and see those who stood and still died including Jesus father take this cup off me the father kept quiet he said nevertheless not my will but yours be done you thought the father would say such humility I've cancelled death he still died I belong to Jesus never going back never going back so the revival that is coming will be enhanced the greatest tool we need brothers and sisters is the formation of the character of the Christ that means you are in your office and people are bribing everybody's becoming a millionaire overnight and you make up your mind and say I'm going to stand they will look at you and say you are you are you have been stupid for a long time do you know what it means for your juniors to come and be buying cars estates manipulating all kinds of things and you are there claiming you are standing for Jesus five years nothing changes there are many people in this country who would have been higher than they are now except that they are stand for Jesus they were determined that I will not bend the greatest tool for the revival coming will not be anointing there are many anointed people who could not stand the revivals past it is not going to be revelation Greek and Hebrew you will talk Greek and Hebrew before the flesh the flesh will give you the Hebrew and the Greek version of what it means to fall Samson was anointed Abraham the great even the man who was the friend of God what of Moses Moses a man who saw God face to face the Bible says yet because of anger uncontrolled anger God said you will not enter the promised land he was not angry for himself he was angry for a stiff-necked people you will never understand what Moses went through until God makes you a leader over people one moment they are singing Moses congratulations for bringing us out of Egypt the next moment they are saying Moses we don't understand you and this your God Aaron built for us a God that we will bow to you know what it meant when Jesus stood there with Barabbas and saw people who ate his bread at his crusade they said crucify him madam you who I raise your son don't talk to me crucify him hosting the revival and the power of God may mean standing alone it may mean sacrificing your potential for prosperity for life yes sir Jesus obtained a physical scar in his hand that was what it took for redemption there are people today who have physical deficiencies in their lives that they incurred not by carelessness it was the price for standing for Jesus Nina is ne Bazankoma Bazankoma Baya. The character of the Christ, more than Christian talk, more than Christian whatever. Let me say this as we wrap up. I submit to you, and I say this with every sense of honor and respect to my generation. We need to be careful. The level of carelessness in every area. Are we together now it is my life that is the language of a generation that is not thinking well it is my life I don't care I can do anything I want to do it is my life dress anyhow it is my life talk anyhow it is my life everybody is talking about revival clapping about revival and sometimes respectfully speaking you see the kind of carelessness and the presence of flesh and yet we keep advocating revival God is not a fool I know God will give me 10,000 people to train you know what it means for God to trust you with 10,000 souls that he died for to train some of them millionaires some of them struggling with the flesh it takes stamina 
It is true that a revival is coming. It is true that God is moving across the earth. It is true that God is looking for men and women that are available. No matter how you fall under the anointing, no matter how you stand, no matter how people accredit you, let me tell you, the testimony of character with God, that uprightness, it must become, you must take advantage of the grace of God and stand in faith, a broken and a contrite heart. Psalm 51 verse 17, Oh Lord, you will not despise. This is my message tonight. You must get to a point where you are broken before God. The, let me tell you the truth. The greatest unbecoming of this revival will be an, a, a manifestation of pride. The Bible says, let him that thinketh he stand, take heed lest he falls. There are many in the body who have fallen at different levels. There are many today, some we know, some we've heard, some we see. The only thing we owe our fallen soldiers in the body is number one, our prayers. And number two, within the jurisdiction given to us, if we can have access to encourage them to stand, this is what it, we have. Because in your lifetime, let me tell you, it's like the hand of a clock. It is coming and it will still come to you. You hear that maybe arm robbers came and stole something in a man of God's church. Don't just get up and say it does not have faith. Shame on them and embarrassment to redemption. No. Even if you don't know him, God bless you. I heard that this happened to you. We pray that the Lord will stand with you and stand by you. How is your wife and family? May the Lord honor you. You have made your own contribution. Because you see, let me tell you, you do not know the kind of evil that will come upon the earth. You hear that somebody has been bereaved. Don't sit down there and be talking and saying, these people, they don't have, when they were teaching about long life, they were not there. You should be the first to go there and say, look, we're standing with you. This is one of the blessings that I learned from this, our orthodox background. Respectfully speaking, Pentecostal and charismatic circles. When people go through down times in their lives, they are the first to push people away. When you give birth to children, when you have promotion, we men of God are quick to bring you. You are my son and you are my daughter. But when something tragic happens, they go to your local church somewhere. The level of hatred that is in the body of Christ, the level of jealousy that is in the body of Christ, the level of ill wishing one for another that is in the body of Christ, and yet we all stand to claim that revival will come. It's a joke. No. Are we together? A man of God starts ministry and you are laughing. Oh, this one is not, he has only two members sorry for him no it shouldn't be so when we held our first crusade i'm not even sure we're more than 50. i can't remember if we we're up to 50. you would have laughed at that the group of 50 people but this is what god is doing today that's why when dr panam he was preaching my message with what he was doing when I saw these precious people, I know some of them, they may not carry the comeliness of celebrity musicians. So they don't, they are not worth your applause. I mean, what this lady is playing, this and that. But tomorrow you see these same people singing the praises of Jesus to the nations and you quickly bring this and say, please autograph it for me. Our world for you. My charge tonight is that the greatest tool, I repeat again, for the revival coming will be more it will take more than anointing to lift up jesus and represent him it will take more than excellent preaching i know that africa and the world has exceptional people god has granted us grace in the area of revelation but make no mistakes we are not the first there are people who have come before us who were like the epitome of the exegesis of scripture and yet the revival still failed in their watch there are many men of God in Nigeria and yet Nigeria is still the way it is. That should already humble us that there is koinonia in Nigeria alongside many ministries and we keep bragging with the little we have done yet the nation is still acting as if there are no believers. It should humble us to say, Lord, we need you. There is something that we do not have. 
a broken and a contrite heart. Dr. Panam got it absolutely when he wrote the song, Lord, we are sorry. We've turned around, we've done all kinds of things. He says, now we repent, forgive us, Lord, we pray, and then restore, bring down your glory. It was not a special number. It was a prophetic word for many years that will come. We need to repent of many things. Listen to my message, the purified church. I'm sure you've got, used it as a retreat material. There are people shouting, attacking immorality, attacking a lot of things. But there are other aspects of lack of character too. There are others who are attacking money because they are not collecting money. What of pride? What of jealousy? Then there are people who are, everything that corrupts the heart must be dealt with without sparing. No matter how small and no matter how great. The deception of stratifying the flesh and say these are weightier matters simply because they carry a heavier sociological embarrassment. No. Everything you find jealousy in your heart, deal with it. Lust, deal with it. Pride, deal with it. Anger, deal with it. How do you deal with it? You don't have the power, but you can submit yourself before the presence of the one who deals with it. Now you understand the mystery of the woman with the alabaster box. When she brought it, she broke it. The posture of the champions in our generation, let me show you. This is going to be the posture. Those who are standing may not even find the ground that they will stand upon. This is the posture of champions for the revival that is coming. While people are clapping for you and while people are calling you names, you are by the altar crying for mercy. Lord, purge my heart, purge my life, purge my ministry. Apostle Joshua Selman, you are going around the nations. Lord, shut my ears from all of this beyond the level that is enough to encourage me. You are a CEO. You are the next Dangote. Congratulations. This is the posture. I want you to get this because God is speaking to all of us. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Take away hatred from my life. Take away jealousy from my life. Take away pride from my life. When you get a woman pregnant, her stomach will protrude and everybody will know. So it will bring a shame, a shame to you. But if you carry the spirit of jealousy, there is no physical evidence. They are called sins of the spirit. They are dangerous things that can kill. This perfectionist mentality we are advocating in the body of Christ is going to destroy a generation. If fathers keep rebuking the generation, they have earned the right to by their character. But let me challenge young people, especially younger ministers. Let us be careful the way we use our mouth talking. We are just starting the journey. There are many heights. There are many challenges that are coming. I've heard of people insulting politicians. God forbid. Many people have said God forbid and today their heads have remained down and they cannot lift it forever again because they vowed and said a lot of things. We need to be careful. The language of a man of God in this end time is the language of mercy. Lord grant us grace. It is by your mercy that we stand. It is by your mercy that we do what we are doing. If I go for a crusade and somebody rises from a wheelchair while you are clapping and say this apostle is anointed i say lord i know that it is by your mercy thank you for that grace mama if you raise six children and they are all excellent don't start laughing at a woman who is having a son that is drinking because your children have not died yet there are people who became foolish at 55. there is still hope for the devil if the person does not stand through humility I am 10 years in ministry. That's too early. Too early for any noise. Too early for any pride. A man of God called me one day and said, Apostle, you have such vast experience in ministry. I said, hold on. What you see is the mercy of God. I can share with you the little that I have and not little in a way of demeaning myself. Our sufficiencies of God. But let me tell you the truth. If you think I can give you the kind of advice Baba Debo will give you, I will be stupid to believe I can do that. 
Do you know what it means to sit down over tens of thousands of churches? You don't know who is planning what against you. And yet you can get up in the morning and thank the Lord and not be angry. There are many people who have not controlled two children. Respectfully speaking, when Baba's son transited in glory, I happened to be there at the burial. And when I was watching everything, all that was in my heart was my God. Look at the burden that is on this man. And sometimes as I'm coming for koinonia, there are documents to sign. There are meetings. There are several things. Sometimes you see me just coming. You don't know what I was doing before I came. This is our own little kindergarten, whatever we're doing. You, there are men of God who, as at the time they are standing to preach, their wives are in ICU. And yet they are mandated by their covenant of righteousness to still preach. There are even people while they are preaching, an obituary comes. And they say, just to let you know your cousin just died. That can destabilize them. Yet they will stand and preach and counsel. Please hear my voice again. Let him that thinketh he stands take heed lest he falls. To our brethren in the body of Christ who have found themselves fallen, there is hope for you. You can stand, provided there is brokenness. Dr. Panam again sang and brought to the body of Christ. He says, don't give up, it is not over. He said, even when you fail, it is not over. The righteous man falls seven times, the Bible says, but he will rise again. So this is the encouragement. When you see a young minister who is misbehaving, don't insult them and just tear them down and discourage them. There is still a revivalist. Guide them in love. You who are matured and tell them, listen, you need to drop these excesses. Are we together? When you see those who are standing, encourage them. May God grant you the grace. Oh, I don't need that. I'm okay. I'm fine. I know what to do. <laughs> One day I was traveling somewhere and the way the plane was shaking. I'm not talking of this mild shake in the air. Shaking that you know that even you know the people around. You know there's a way they behave that God is only you that will help us. I just told myself, I said, Lord... If this is going to be the moment to die, please help me and take care of my parents, take care of my siblings, all these my precious children that I'm taking care of. Help me raise somebody who can do that work and let me be with you in peace. That plane was shaking almost as if we were all going to die. Sincerely, if I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. When we landed, people clapped. Round of applause to the pilot for being able to walk to, I don't know what kind of demonic cloud that was. So next time you are confessing, for me to leave is Christ. Pause. You can stop there till the day your faith finishes the other verse. And to die is gain. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Revival is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, to the revivalists, to the apostles, both manifesting now and in the making, do not allow anyone and anything discourage you. Some of you are very stubborn. God will still use you, but not that version of you. You need to repent. Hallelujah. Some of you would think it does not matter. A gentleman sent me a text and said, what do I think about tattoos? I said, if you have it before you were born again, there's nothing that can, happen, that can happen. But if by the time you are born again and you still want to do all of these things, you see, all things are lawful but not all. In the kingdom, it's not all about sinfulness and righteousness. There are times it's about foolish and wise. There were ten virgins. They were all virgins. And yet, as virgins, they still suffered because five were foolish and five were wise. Are we together now? If I draw a mouse on my head now and I come to preach and I say it's my life, it's not my business, please don't feel bad. I'm just, just to touch on it and then we'll pray. Are we together? And you don't, I, I just tell you, how, will you believe if I'm praying for you? <laughs> Let's not say these things don't matter and keep making a fool out of ourselves. No, sir. If, it's, if someone did it in the past and the person has come to the fold, there's nothing we can do. Believers, let's be careful. 
respectfully speaking some of these things we ship from the west i'm not condemning but the west needs the mercy of africa god is shipping people to correct things there the generation of people who have risen right now are is a generation that does not respect god just because they are technologically advanced does not mean they are spiritually advanced don't trade your heritage of spirituality are we together get back to the things that produce power indeed get back to the place of prayer in the morning but more than all this your heart condition please i'm giving you an assignment this week go and dedicate any one of the days and just spend at least two hours alone with god it doesn't matter whether you are husband and wife do it differently please ask for permission and just say god some of you need to go back and say lord i'm not coming to the 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 western ideology that i'm meeting now i'm coming to the god of my covenant that knew me before i rose lord have mercy what am i doing wrong where am i missing it with my life and be very sincere if it is the god of heaven he will not condemn you but he will also not condone he will come with his fire the refiner's fire and tear that dross apart in your name we will rise Adonai you reign on high in your name we will rise Adonai practice periodic retreats never be too busy for retreats shut down even if it means to shut down administration politely apologize to the people and say the 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 the, the nature of things around my spiritual life please i need two days alone with god sometimes you need to tell your friends please please oh we, we need to go and watch the movie as an man you is playing can't you watch a repeat of the match Will your failures repeat? Satan is plotting evil for you and you are two weeks left to fall into it. And God is, when you begin to sense, some of you, this is the season you are in right now. You are sensing that you need to be alone with God. Make sure you run after koinonia and go and hide with God. Don't let people say there's so much demand on your anointing. That is absolute nonsense. You will die, they will bury you, you will become a lesson to many, and the world will continue. Please, let's go back to work on ourselves. I'm sorry, but I will have to tell you, some of you need to change your dressing. I've told you this thing. Take away some of these demonic things and take it out of your life and become a genuine Christian indeed. And please don't tell me it does not matter. Hallelujah. This it does not matter is the devil's trap to destroy our generation. It's not only prayer. It's not only fasting. It's not only rema. Even the devil has revelation. He used it on Jesus. We're talking about the uprightness and the character of the Christ. That when somebody looks at you, they don't say you are Yoruba, you are Hausa, you are Igbo. Uh -huh, you are behaving like them. Where are you from? <clears throat> the life of Christ has swallowed you so much. That's why I told you when it has to do with the formation of the character of the Christ, there are no champions there. Everybody is a healthy project at work. By the mercy of God. When I lie down before God to cry here, I'm not going to lie down as Apostle Joshua Selman. No. I will roll before him and say, you who shows men mercy, have mercy upon this son of yours. Have mercy upon this son of yours. Leave all the text messages. Let the text messages keep coming. MOG, you are this. Let all the revelations keep coming. 
There are times you need to close those books and keep them aside. Don't let revelation fool you. There are times you need to close all of those things and just lie down in his presence and say, my father and my maker, I come before you. Let like the threshing floor of Naboth, let the refiner's fire rest upon me. Let there be a purification of my heart and my tendencies. Search my heart, O oh God, and try my thoughts. And if you find any wicked way in me, lead me to the way everlasting. And God says, this is the kind of vessel. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Man of God, we may not condemn you, but the secret place is calling for you. Businessman, we may not condemn you, but the secret place is calling for you. Father and mother, husband to your wife and wife to your husband, children to parents. The message and the language of condemnation is the language of children. But the language of condoning is the language of fools. You have to get back to the place of the altar and cry. Some of you may need to, I'm saying it again. You may need to have some time with God. Shut down your television. Shut down whatever. And say, Lord, it is me and you again. Look for a worship song like this. Something playing. And while people are snoring away the next the next 10 years of their lives you are crying before your maker and you are saying lord help me oh lord i want to know your glory i want to offer the sacrifice of praise feel this temple lord with your spirit once again when the glory comes there'll be no words to say oh. when the glory comes there'll be no words to say Oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. Let me make an altar call up front before we pray. You've heard the message already. Apostle, I need Jesus. I can't tell lies. This message came to the core of my soul. Whether you are in this auditorium or outside, please hear me. If you are leaving this place right now and the trumpet sounds, can you honestly say that I have a stand with Jesus that will make heaven? Nobody condemns you, but he's giving you room for a new beginning. And you are here, you are saying, Apostle, I don't even know whether I'm standing in the faith or not. I'm going to count one to five. Please, I want you to run. Run and come and stand here right now. He's giving you a new beginning. One. Two, don't mind who is looking at you. Come to Jesus. Hey, hey. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh. When the glory comes, be no words to say oh, oh, oh. when the glory Jesus said, if you deny me in the presence of men, that I will deny you before my Father and even the holy angels. For those who are following online, whether you are following from the US, the UK, 
You are following by way of television. Help those under the anointing. You are following by way of rebroadcast. Just leave them there. Let me tell you the truth. God can give you a new beginning. You are a man of God listening to me. It does not matter what has happened to your life and your ministry. Please hear this preacher. There is hope for you. You can start afresh again with him. One of the most powerful words in the Bible is the word again. Again. Businessman, I know you went to a shrine to get all kinds of things done on your head. For as long as you are alive, there is still hope for you. Apostle, you do not know what I've done with my life. Can I tell you the truth? If you draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to you. Your own prerequisite is the genuineness of your brokenness. And let me tell you this, body of Christ, please, for this one time, hear this clarion call. Stop laughing at wounded soldiers within the body. Provided you find brokenness, be the person to rush to help wounded people to stand. We are all standing by the grace of God. And for anyone who is standing and shaking, make sure you throw away pride and take your life seriously with brokenness. Do not say it does not matter. That's what, that's the true spirit of revival. You have your pastor, you have a man of God, somebody who used to be on fire for God and the person has backslidden. Talking about them and laughing and just talking rubbish is not going to bring restoration. At the least, if you cannot do anything, you owe your intercession. Lord, let this man of God not go down. Let this woman of God not go down. Lord, let this church not go down. For the sake of your name, preserve your heritage. That's the character of a believer. Oh, I used to know this musician. This one happened. I used to know this man of God. I used to know this businessman. Sometimes we pride in celebrating people's former glory. No. That's not the life we are called into. God is giving us an opportunity right now. He says, create in me a clean heart. For those who are standing, congratulations. But master the art of walking with God and in his presence. Cry before him day and night. Not in condemnation but in brokenness. Search my heart. Lord, what else can destroy me in the next five or ten years? Do not wait until I go there. I'm not ashamed if you reveal it to me. And cry before him at the altar. Anybody who acknowledges the state of men and the mercy of God will be very careful as you are dealing with issues in the body of Christ. Because let me tell you the truth, this journey is very far and there are heights we do not even know how far we will go. When you hear that someone's marriage was destroyed, pray. If you can support with your prayer and your counseling, do so. If you cannot, keep quiet and pray. You hear that somebody went to a herbalist, pray. Provided if they, if they become stubborn and rebellious, they are doing it, they are undoing themselves. They will reap the consequences of rebellion. But provided you find brokenness, body of Christ, hear this preacher. We have to rewrite the narrative of our response to wounded people within the body. We need to be careful. You hear that a politician who loved God before now has gone down spiritually. Don't just laugh at him and say foolish people. You don't know what it means to be in a position where you are sitting upon altars and charms. When the glory comes, there will be no words to say. Oh. Please lift your hands, those of you who are in front. Thank you for the courage of coming out to make this decision and those who are following online the lord jesus sees your heart please say this after me some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word create in me a clean heart give me a new beginning i declare that you are my lord you are my savior you are my king i declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare that I am a child of God. 
in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted father thank you for bringing these ones this is what this is all about you're giving them an opportunity to start afresh again you declare to us that whosoever sins we forgive that it is forgiven therefore by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life from tonight until forever I declare that you belong to Jesus I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in Jesus name I pray amen and amen a big congratulations to you please I want you to follow the counselors all of you the counselors are just by my right waving their hands towards you may God bless you let's appreciate them very quickly as they go Let's appreciate them very quickly as they go. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Just a minute and we're out of this place. I just need a few scriptures. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul.